Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here once again. I am here today to review The Old Man, Part 4. Or, as it should be called, The Old Man, Part 4, Slog, Part 4. You know, like, that's that's this whole fucking show. It's just nothing but an old slog. It's like you're you're sitting on the toilet, taking a dump, and it's taking you like ten minutes to do it. Like that's that's the show. It's just like nothing but a slog, just sitting around, uh, just like waiting for something to happen, and it's like nothing's gonna happen because we got to do more of the same old shit we've been doing for the first three episodes, and it's really funny because I see a bunch of people don't like this episode and they say oh my god how could this episode suck when the first episodes were so good and it's like see anyone who watched my video and you guys disagreed with me and you thought I was talking shit and you thought that I was you know not being truthful I was just being a hater now you see that I was right I was exactly right with all my predictions because all the problems of the first three episodes are the same problems in this episode, episode four. Uh, there's all the same issues, but there's no action once again. Well, of course, there's there's some action, but you number one, you can't see it because the lighting is atrocious. And number two, uh, it's a flashback action sequence, so you know nothing bad's going to happen to anyone. Uh, <laughs> you know, this episode, it was bad. It was just, it's the same old shit. The only reason why I kind of enjoyed it a little bit was because I knew that I only had to watch one episode this week and not, not three at a time. Because I'm telling you guys, I watched those first three episodes. That was one of the worst television experiences I've ever had watching those first three all back to back it was like just like kill me now uh because like I like slow burns I, there's nothing wrong with a slow burn you hear me nowadays constantly complaining why aren't tv shows longer than 10 episodes why don't they go longer than five seasons why don't they put any effort into doing more and instead of uh, putting creative constraints on themselves? This show, you know, so you know this show's a problem. You know that this show, it, the stuff that's going on, you know that if I'm saying it's too slow and that it's too, too little, I mean too much, you know it's a problem. So this episode, it's all about Agent Poontang, and, you know, he's with uh, Karen, of course. He gets Karen out of the trunk, uh, that useless character. He gets her out of the trunk, and, you know, I know people are going to ask, why aren't you calling her Zoe? And I will say this, Zoe's can be just as bad as Karen's, you know. Anyone with any name can be bad, okay, and believe me, I've known some bad Zoes. Uh, I went to high school with this guy who I like to call the Redskin Cot Gobbler. And he wanted to go out with this girl named Zoe. And she was such a bitch that she wouldn't even give him a yes or no answer. And then she just didn't, she just didn't go out with him or say anything to him. Because she, her friend told her that he was too short for her. I mean, that, that's the type of mental derangement that people named Zoe can have. And, and so, yeah, j just so you guys know, that's that's how bad Zoe's. Zoe's can be Karen's too. Uh, but this bitch, she's a Karen for sure. I mean, I mean, you just, it's, God, it's it's so funny. It's like, it's, it's sad. Like, I don't want to be right. I don't want this show to fail. I don't want it to be ba as bad as I've already, uh, it, I've already predicted it's going to be, but it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Like, this episode was nothing but spinning its wheels. There's no suspense. There's no action. There's no drama. It's just boring. It's, 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 
it's it's terrible. Like you have okay, so uh, Karen and uh, Agent Poontang. Agent Poontang buys her some clothes, and how does he do that? He just waltzes into a store and buys her some clothes. He doesn't put any effort. We don't have any suspenseful sequence where he goes into a store, buys her stuff. No, it's just he waltzes in there, waltzes out. Nothing bad happens. No, 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 it's just easy. It's barely an in, in, inconvenience, like that fucking pitch meeting guy says on his pitch meeting uh, videos. And then he he gets her an apartment. How does he do that? Who knows? And it's just he has a company and he's had these fake identities now where they have all this money and unlimited resources and just you know <laughs> it's just so trash it's like he doesn't have any sort of conflict he doesn't have any sort of uh of resistance there's nothing it's like he it, it's like why is this even a story like he's not even on the run like when you watch a story about someone on the run You'd think that it would be like an intense, scary story. You'd think that there'd be a lot of action, a lot of great moments, a lot of uh, just, oh, is shit, is he going to make it out of there alive? Is he going to be able to conceal his identity there? No, none of that here. None of that at all. Instead, what we get are these boring sequences where he's sitting around trying to talk to this Karen and... And she just sits there with a, a plain Jane uh, look on her face like she's constipated or like she just found out that Oprah got canceled. And uh, there's some stuff with like her sitting in the apartment drinking wine and watching TV and feeding the dogs. And it's like, what is this shit? Like, this is just spinning the wheels. Th this is classic spinning its wheels storytelling. And then she comes up with this random scheme at the end that completely, it, it this, whole, this whole thing just comes completely out of nowhere. And the thing is, is that I didn't know that this was based on a book. And I, I can't believe that this part would be in the book. It's such a 2022 type of thing where her character, she's been taken hostage because he doesn't want her to get killed. And... Her reaction is, I'm going to divorce the fake identity and I'm going, or I'm just going to take half of everything he has so that I know that I'm his equal partner. And it's like, wow, that's such a 2022 thing to do uh, and a total Karen thing to do too. And that's what we get with her character, like, wow. And it's almost like the writers had to conjure up drama because there wasn't any drama to to put there. On top of that, there were these really shitty flashback sequences where it's just more backstory with Faraj Hamjad and uh, the the girl Bidara. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> I'm just so disinterested from this trash show. Uh, but it's more backstory with them and the whole romance thing where Agent Poon Tang steals the warlord's wife. And we get this whole action sequence where I think they're both, like, killing bad guys together and, you know, cringeworthy shit with that. And, of course, you can't see anything because it's all in the dark. So there was, like, 20 minutes of the show where I literally couldn't see what was going on. Uh, but I don't really, there's no stakes to it anyway, because we knew that both of them weren't going to die, uh, or anything bad's going to happen to them, except, I don't know, maybe some light torture, like maybe Jeff Bridges will, uh, his younger version, maybe that guy will get hit in the face or something, I mean, that's the level of, uh, action we have going on here, and it was just, it felt, again, like an artificial insertion by the writer's who knew, uh-oh, there's nothing going on in episode four, so let's have these shitty backstory action sequences where hardly anything happens. And it's just like some random action that you can't even see. Wow, that's fun. 
And then we have the story with Harold, uh, John Lithgow. And as I've said before, everyone's doing a good job acting. The acting is not the problem, okay? Just because Jeff Bridges is old, that doesn't mean I'm criticizing the show because it's about an old character. That's not why I'm criticizing the show. And I say that because anyone who criticized the first three episodes got accused of being ageist. And it's like, no, that literally has nothing to do with why I'm criticizing this show. Like, if anything, I was excited about seeing something with Jeff Bridges in it. Like, I would watch a, this show with Jeff Bridges. That's why I watched it. Uh, so, you know, that's a bullshit excuse. So d don't try to use that with episode four either. Uh, John Lithgow, he, you know, we thought he and, uh, the daughter, uh, Freckles, she doesn't like being called Freckles, apparently, but I'm just gonna call her Freckles anyway. Uh, so Freckles and Harold, they, we thought we, they were gonna meet with Faraz Hamzad, uh, the villain. I guess he's the villain, even though he puppeteers the entire CIA, and FBI, and everyone else in America, uh, <laughs> I mean, the amount of power and influence that Faraz Hamzad has is just ridiculous, like, the fact that he puppeteers the entire American government is just bizarre, uh, it's really weird, and it, it, it doesn't really make any sense, considering the fact that Jeff Bridges talks about how he has these enemies, and it's like, what do these enemies think, think about Faraz Hamzad controlling the entire American government? Like, he has this entire shadow government that's going to hunt down and kill Dan Chase and uh, bring Agent Poontang to him. Like, what, what do the, his enemies think about that? Like, is, is just everyone okay with this guy in the Middle East owning an entire shadow government. I mean, it's, it's kind of strange. And I did kind of like the, I, I do like the idea of Jeff Bridges, of Agent Poontang, uh, trying to get a relationship with one of his enemies. And so then he can just have one of his enemies kill him and him use all of his resources. That, that sounds like it could be uh, pretty good, but as of now, this was just spinning its wheels, the whole episode, it was like moving like molasses, like the first three episodes, but instead of meeting with Faraz himself, or Farab, whatever the fuck, instead of meeting with him, Harold and Freckles and the nosy Peter, uh, they meet with his lawyer, and so we have this whole episode where they're just talking to his lawyer and she's like, I don't really know anything that's going on. And so basically it was just a giant waste of time. And it was just a whole episode of Harold has to convince her to uh, let him see Faraz himself. And finally she does it at the end. And the twist is that, oh no, Freckles is going to go see Faraz too. And uh, Harold and uh, Freckles are going to go together to see him in the Middle East. Oh no, what's going to happen? Uh, just more talking. Like, just, that's all the show is. It's just these characters talking on the phone, talking to each other, talking to themselves thinking, contemplating, which is talking without saying anything, uh, like, all these characters do, that's all they do, that's all this show is, is just talk, 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 it's tell, not show, and eventually that's gonna bite you in the ass, and this episode bit the show in the ass, because a lot of people have realized it's trash, and they did not like this episode, and the thing with Karen at the end, extorting 
Agent Poontang, you know, I kind of thought it was funny. I mean, this Agent Poontang, he's like, Ugh, there's this woman, she's the landlord, and I really like her. And, you know, <laughs> she's in danger, wink, wink. And I'm going to take her across the country with me. And, you know, you might as well, at this point, this show shouldn't even be called The Old Man. Because I don't see any indication of this show having a main character. This show should just be called The Boring Ensemble. Or maybe like The Old Couple would be a more fitting thing. Because at this point, like, are we just going to focus the entire season on uh, Agent Poontang hooking up with uh, this uh, Karen? Like, we, first we're going to bounce to the past and see him hooking up with Badara. And then we're going to see him in the present, hooking up with Karen. And then we're going to see Freckles hooking up with the nosy Peter. And that started to happen in this episode. And it's like, just, God, this show is so boring. Like, something, when's something going to happen on this action show? Like, something. Like, I'm sorry, but this show was advertised as an action show all the trailers did was show the characters shooting things punching things uh it, it it's like this is this is really dull i give this episode uh well first i'd like to amend my grades for the first three episodes my the first episode i give a b I thought the first episode was pretty good. It could have been, it could be better. It was building to better things, uh, but it was pretty good. It's a B. The second episode was a C. The third episode was a C minus, and this episode is a D plus. Uh, this show is just completely. I I have no interest in the stuff that's going on. It's so uh, boring. And I have to wonder if the book is any better. Uh, because this is yet another suspense thing where there's no suspense in it at all. And, and I'm getting really irritated by that too. It's like nobody cares about suspense anymore. Because suspense takes time. And the people who make TV shows nowadays, they don't want to spend time doing anything. They just want to have characters sit around and talk on the phone. Uh, for hours and hours and hours and hours. I mean, this show should literally be called The Old Phone, uh, and it would be mo a more fitting title. But, like, another thing I watched this year, Deep Water, that was another thing where they advertised it as, like, a suspenseful thriller. Oh, it's going to be so intense, and it's going to be an erotic thriller, too, uh, which, you know, erotic in 2022 basically means some kissing, and then a girl takes her shirt off. Like, wow, that's really erotic. Uh, <laughs> and guess what? The movie had no erotic stuff in it at all. Uh, it never turned me on. And then it never had anything thrilling or suspenseful in it either. And this show was advertised as an action suspense show. It has no action, and it has no suspense either. All it has is talking and telling and not showing. And frankly, uh, I don't really care to watch the rest of the season, but I will anyway because I still want to see these actors because I really like them, you know. And, and I also think it's fun to review this show because I get to call someone Agent Poontang unironically. And so, yeah, it's pretty fun. But I am sorry that, that anyone who liked the first three episodes... I am sorry that you guys have finally seen the full, the true picture of the show. And, you know, this is exactly what I knew it was going to be. And that's why I was warning you guys. Like, I was saying, why is this guy taking this Karen with him on this, on the run? Why is this happening? Why isn't anything happening why are we just having this constant flashbacks with these boring scenes? Why? And it's and the why I said that because I knew that that's all we're going to get with this show is we're just going to get this boring bland trash. Uh so anyways, please like this video, comment, 
tell me what you thought of the old couple. And then uh, please subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more honest reviews of this television show. Because, yeah, that's, that's the thing. I'm not just going to sit here and say, this is the greatest show of all time. Oh, my God, it's so amazing. No, I'm not going to do that. But if it turns itself around, I will do that and say it's really good. So who knows? Maybe next episode will be a masterpiece. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, so goodbye, everybody. See you soon.